Okay, so we are back. We're doing a live reaction to game one of the NBA Finals. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button before we get into this video. But I'm here with my co-host Cam. Cam, why don't you kick it off for us and talk to me a little bit about some instant reactions to the Nuggets kind of dominating the Heat in game one of the NBA Finals. Yeah, I mean, this is about what I expected, honestly. I mean, outside of the massive talent gap we see, the, the one thing that really stuck, stood out to me is the size disadvantage that the Heat are at. I mean, when Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., and Jokic are all on the floor, the Heat just have no answer for that size. I mean, early on, they were dominated on the boards all over, all the way around. It's, they really just can't compete with that many big bodies. Playing Jimmy Butler at the four has its massive disadvantages in that aspect. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, we see Aaron Gordon going at Max Struess, going at Gabe Vincent, going at Duncan Robinson early in the game. I think he had 10 or 12 points in the first like seven minutes of that game because what they're doing is they're just making him seal at the seal in the paint. Jokic is firing that ball in and next thing you know, it's a dunk over and over and over again. I had that written down in my notes too. The Heat are way too small, but talk to me about your boy MPJ, man. Another great day for him and he's not just shooting the ball. He's attacking the glass. He's playing defense, getting huge blocks too. All around game from MPJ. Talk to me a little bit about him, man. Yeah, Michael Porter never swing the rock, even finish with one assist tonight. Come on. He's a playmaker too. I know you didn't mention that, but I mean, a dominant performance from him, especially on the defensive glass. I think he finished with like 11 or 10, 12 boards, something like that. But I mean, I know we already touched on the size, but I mean, he's just so he's so lucky to play with Jokic. Jokic just sets him up and the, finds him in the perfect spots, backdoor cuts, whatever it is. It feels like it feels almost effortless when you're playing with him. And I mean, I do want to touch on Jokic real quick. He didn't really have a massive game just from like, I mean, for his standards, at least from what we've come to expect from him as far as like box score. But it was man, a near triple double on pretty much like for me, it just looked too easy for him at one point. Like, it really didn't look like he was even really having to exert that much energy to just dominate the entire aspects of the game. Yeah, talk about being a number one that can impact the game in a plethora of ways that doesn't involve scoring the basketball. Um, we always talk about Joel Embiid versus Nikola Jokic. Joel Embiid, as great as he is of a scorer and as great of a bag as he may have, he can't do what Jokic does off the ball or, or, or control the pace of the game like Jokic can. That kind of leads me into my next point. Jokic is a floor general. He's the clear number one. And not everyone can be a number one, which is why Jamal Murray is a great number two. I mean, this guy is able to work off of Jokic. They can do the pick and rolls. And even when he needs to get an ISO bucket by himself, he has all the moves in his bag to be able to go out and get himself a bucket against some of the best defenders in the league. You said before on the video we did before, I'll pin that right up here. You said if your number two is giving you 35 points per game, it's going to be really tough to beat that type of team. Talk to me a little bit about Jamal Murray. And if he plays like this, wow, this series could be wrapped up pretty quickly. Yeah, I think this is going to be a quick series. I don't think it makes it to get, I don't think it makes it six games. I think it's going to be finished before that. But uh, yeah, Jamal Murray and Jokic might have the best pick and roll I've ever seen in my life. It just, it really just helps with, uh, I mean, obviously Jokic, incredible passer. We already touched on that, but MPJs, they've been playing together with each other for six years now, maybe more. I'm not exactly sure, but just their chemistry that they have with each other is just like, it's it's like when we play 2K. Like we, we know where each other are going to be before like it even the play even sets up. They're on that on another level. And it's just incredible to see. Obviously, he's a great shooter, super talented scorer, but like his rhythm for the game is just really impressive. I mean, playing with Jokic obviously definitely helps that. But I mean, this guy's special, man. I just I just love watching him hoop. Yeah, like you said in 2K, the giving goes, the unspoken communication, and that's kind of what we're seeing from Jokic and Murray. Now, the thing I want to touch on is we talked about the Nuggets. Let's talk about the Heat a little bit. Cody Zeller got a lot of playing time in this game, and Eric Spolstra seemed to be like, wow, well, I don't have much size. I guess I'm going to have to play Cody a little bit. We didn't see Kevin Love get any playing time. Maybe that's an adjustment that Spo will make in the game two and later on in the series, but the shooters... The Heat got to where they are because of the shooters. Struess and Martin didn't show up tonight. Cam, talk to me about Struess, Martin, Gabe, Vincent, and the Heat not being able to knock down, which were relatively open shots for the entire game. 
Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. I said before this uh, video or before this game even started in a video that somebody on the Heat has to score 20 points. Uh, if what's, if I know it was Caleb Martin last series, it's Gabe Vincent or Struess, but I mean, I think almost midway through the third, Caleb Martin and Max Struess were a combined 0 of 17. You, you can't you can't win games if you're getting that kind of production from two of your. I, I don't I don't like calling them role players because they're kind of more stars. It just kind of feels like the heat generic term we use for everybody who's not Jimmy Butler at this point. But I mean, these guys are these guys are all legitimately great players. I mean, if not great, very good. So I wouldn't I don't like calling them role players, but you can't get that kind of production out of them and expect to beat this juggernaut offense you have them uh, with the Nuggets. Yeah, absolutely. But we can expect great shooters like them to continue having a slump like they're in right now. Tyler Hero will be coming back for game two or game three. But this was a statement game by Denver. They've had a week off. They said, we're not rusty. We're protecting home court. They're still undefeated at home. Cam, before we hop on out of here, give me your game two prediction uh, for what we're going to see in game two. Yeah, I mean, obviously Spolster is going to make some adjustments. Uh, he's going to watch the film. I mean, we know he started off as a videographer with the Heat. So, I mean, nobody knows watching film better than this guy. I think Kevin Love's got to get on the floor. I think there's got to be something about maybe maybe he's injured. I know he was dealing with some leg, lower leg stuff against the Celtics. But, I mean, maybe that's why he didn't get any minutes. I can't imagine they he plays another full game and doesn't doesn't see the floor. I, if I'm supposed to, though, I'm I'm looking at Tyler Hero, and I would consider inserting him into the starting lineup. I know we talked about this before, and I was like, maybe hold off until game three, see how he is coming off the bench. But I feel like it's definitely discussion to have, see with what – I know messing up the chemistry that you build is always a big concern. I know Draymond touched on that in his, on his show uh, this week as well. But I would definitely consider that, especially from this dominant performance we just saw from the Nuggets. I mean – if nobody knows how to fight through adversity like the Heat, but I'd rather not go down 0-2. Yeah, it's hard to kind of throw a player into the fire that's been injured, who's been sitting on the bench or sitting in, in recovering and, rehabilit and rehabilitation and just throw him into an NBA Finals game, the hardest game, the hardest environment you can. But I agree with you. You need some type of instant offense. I think Tyler Hero can bring that to you now on the Kevin Love front. If Kevin Love plays power forward, your boy MPJ and Gordon are going to blow right by him. If he plays center, Jokic, you can't do much with them. Maybe he can space the floor, draw Jokic out to the three-point line. But I see how Kevin Love can kind of be a liability in this series. But with that being said, veteran guy, he knows how to play. He knows all the little kinks in the kind of backdoor alleyways and, and, and all the little tricks that you can really get away with in the finals. Excited to see what happens there. Any last word before you hop on out of here? Yeah, I mean, you're right. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're still you're not beating Kevin Love backdoor. I know he's not the same athlete, but he's not going to fall for he's not going to fall for those little tricks, especially with the younger players like uh, MPJ specifically, not as much Gordon. But I think I mean, there is no lineup that he can put out there. They don't just have they don't have the personnel to deal with this size because you, you can't start Cody Zeller, Bam and Kevin Love. Like, obviously, that's not an option, but like that's the kind of size they need to deal with this Nuggets team. That's not going to happen. So, I mean, obviously, I think Jimmy Butler's got to play the three for them to really get competitive in this series. But I mean, I already said it earlier, Kevin Love's got to be got to be a bigger piece on this team. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Great game one, uh, maybe not the most competitive, but the Denver Nuggets are, have shown we're not the Bucks, we're not the Knicks, we're not the Celtics. We are a juggernaut in the West. We're not playing with our food. With that being said, that'll wrap up the game one reaction in the video for today. Hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys. We're growing subscribers every single day. We're at 4.1 thousand, which is huge for us. Really, really appreciate that. But until then, we're going to try and get these out for each game. It's kind of what is it it's late man it's it's, it's 11 o'clock so we're trying to do this for you guys and and leave that like and subscribe to kind of support us but with that being said looking forward to the rest of this nba finals and we will see you guys later peace